I believe it's God's heart and it's my heart that where there is a desire for the Lord to enter and to bring us to a place where he's satisfied with us, that's a lifelong journey. I said to someone just the other day, uh, my book, My Journey with God, is important in the sense that there are pathways to life. That statement is made a number of times in the Proverbs. But I see too many people tripping, even as Christians. And what I'm trying to say is life with God is not a trip. It's a journey. And the journey is taking you two places. One, into Christ likeness. That's Romans 8, 29. Two, into fulfilling the reason he made you. That's destiny. See? And then when you uh, train somebody, disciple them, raise up a child, then, and they follow those principles and practices, that's legacy. I'm just saying he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But if you just think about God creating Adam, he created Adam so that he could have a generational legacy that would have been forever because even in the earth, his responsibility would have been there. Hey, come, come on, think about that with me for a minute. Hey, what did Adam look like 900 years old or, or any of the people that made it to 700, 800? Did their hair is gray? Did they get wrinkles? Um, were their ability to, uh, their movement slowed? What about speech? You understand? Look, I'm going to make this statement, and it's, it's accurate, that all retrograde, any diminishing part of the creation is a result of Adam's fall. Because Adam was not made to be lowered in any area. I'm just saying, hey, look, I just felt it today. I just decided, come on. It's at the regular time. But I just decided I want to talk to you. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm telling you things. And I want to say, Jason, I can hear all your movement down there. Um, it came out on the screen. You got me straight now. But that's OK. Hey, look, my son and I and Miss Ellenwood are on this thing. We're doing it because it's what we're supposed to do. Get the truth out to the whole world. And so you see that print that's down at the bottom of the screen that I call her my Miss Daisy. And she's doing it. Professor in a university, uh, adjunct professor. I mean, look, and when she saw me doing what I was doing, saying what I was saying, she said, look, I believe the Lord wants me. She didn't say that. She felt God spoke to her heart that she's supposed to take what I'm saying and put it into print. And then it's edited. And then I'm constantly adding stuff to it. That's just what it is right now. So you are a part of this company of believers who I believe I have the assignment to take you into Christ likeness. And that becomes my conversation, but it's the biblical conversation. And I want to discuss with you some things that's in the red, meaning Jesus was talking. And, and this particular part that I'm going to be discussing is in Matthew chapter 10. So I'd like for you to go there. Now, Jesus came to not only correct the failure of Adam. They're in the garden. You've heard me say it, and it's in there. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. And so that was a spiritual battle. It was. It was, it was Adam fighting against the fallen archangel, Lucifer, who had become the devil. And he had the ability to infiltrate the serpent and to challenge Adam about God's word to him. Now, that's some powerful stuff. But he was the lower standard. He was the low level. And God was upset with, with um, Adam when he comes down and talks to him in Genesis 3.17 and says to him, you hearken to the voice of your wife. In other words, you put her word over my word. Hey, I'm kind of upset with people doing that about these news shows and these counterfeit doctors who are politically influenced and not biblically influenced. They, I taught people the truth. They got saved. Some of them, their marriages got better. They found their destiny. And then they listened to somebody on television to tell them a whole lot of stuff. And they chose what they're saying over what I'm telling them. I never told them wrong. And then the other thing that's clear, you don't even know those people except 
their personality, their television personalities. But the people who follow me know me. They know how I behave individually. They know how I raise my wife. They know my children. And then I got sons and daughters who I've raised spiritually to live for God. Why weren't you listening? See, that tells me you still are still influenced by exterior factors that don't necessarily come from God. And of course that happens because there is a divorce rate that's pretty high in the church. There are people who commit abortions when they know good and well. They only can do the thing that can bring a child into the world, but they can't make conception happen. Scores of people were not able to have children. And yet, I can't tell you how many people I've prayed for. Conception happened. They, they were able to bear children and then raise those children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. The point that I'm still making out of it is that God's word is the superior word and that nothing is ordained to defeat what God has ordained. And I'm talking about through vessels of clay now. And so there's all kinds of stuff in the Bible, not just about your natural survival, but about your development in the things of God. Now, if I bottom line you out, I'll say that a family is modeling out what another planet would be like if it was your family. <laughs> okay, now I'm just saying. I mean, look, so the world is Adam's family. And we're so far from the failure of Adam that we've forgotten. But when you look at the accounts of Ephesians, if you look at Colossians, and in both those cases, it tells a man his responsibility to the wife. It tells the wife her responsibility to the husband. Well, what is that for? So you can have a good marriage and a good family? No. You're modeling out what it is to be like God as an individual privately with nobody looking in a family, the first fruits of this man's life for toward God is demonstrated toward his wife. Yeah. And so, and then when God allows conception to have children, how they're raising their children would be what's going to be the formation and population of the whole earth. Well, all God has to do is cut out time, the whole past, let everything begin with your family, and let the planet be populated by the principles of the of the husband and the principles of and the submission of the wife, the conception of the children, your family. Okay, so the whole earth is your family. What would that be like? What I'm telling you is, that's what it's about anyway. Because you see, character is a transcendent quality. The, the fruit of the spirit. Read it in Galatians five. Those fruit is what a man need to be excellent as a man of God, as a husband, you see, and as a, as a woman needs, as a wife. And those qualities can be multiplied. And that if, if Adam remained godly and his wife was godly, their children would have been the fruit of their godliness. But I, I made the point that God said to Adam in Genesis 2, 15, if you eat off the tree, you're going to die. So he ate off the tree. He died. Mankind died. Adam is the progenitor of death in the earth. You know, no, even though the devil comes to kill, kill, and destroy, he's not the reason that we have death in the earth. Adam is the reason. Why? Because he allowed the devil to have access to his wife and then to himself. And he receives the devil's word and death already had lost in Lucifer because God kicked him out. He has a limited time. He's an eternal being, but he's going to be bound in chains. The separation from God, separating, separation from creation. The lake of fire, Gehenna, the pit. You're not supposed to go to hell. See, but Adam listened to it. And so death, sin, then when it's conceived, brings forth death. Adam let that happen. Now, he may be looking at me right now. He's not, he's, he's not sad about it because Jesus redeemed his failure. And as the last Adam gave him an opportunity, all the just men made perfect, those that were in the grave, when he was resurrected, they came out of the grave. Yeah, that's a lot, wasn't it? Just men made perfect, what's that? 
those people who followed uh, after the principles that God had in the Old Testament, laws, statutes, ordinances, and covenants. And then let's say people were born into the world. They never knew anything about that. Well, that's covered in, in the scriptures too, in Romans 2, when the Gentiles are without the law. That's non-Jews, didn't have the real God. They were idolaters, basically. But God, he judges. He judges according to light. He judges according to conscience. Yeah, who without the law do the things contained within the law. There are a law within themselves. Hey, that's Job. That's Job's three friends. They knew about God. How? Their conscience in the meanwhile accusing, excusing one another. Also in Romans, it says, you will know there is a God by the things that are made. That's what those guys knew. God's going to judge them. He's called God the judge of all. He knows how to judge everybody and everything fairly. You getting anything out of this? I mean, I'm rolling right now with you because this is real. It's real. I saw the Kanye West interview with Tucker Carlson. Hey, Kanye, need to talk to me. Okay. I'm just saying, Tucker, you need to talk to me. I mean, if you just listen to what I'm saying, it gives an eternal perspective to natural stuff. Wonderful things that Kanye said. He said he's born again. But it's still pretty much human construct of nonsense with people that don't know God. And Tucker, that's basically, you're a Christian, I, I heard you declare it. And the stuff you're saying is still pretty much trying to explain the devil's work through his children. Now, that's strong stuff. But that's in, that's in the Bible. Ephesians, look, read chapters 1 and chapters 2. There's children of disobedience. I mean, it's just like I mentioned about the, the um, you know, this, you can go to Oxford, you know, uh, John Cecil Rhodes, the Rhodes Scholarship. I mentioned that. Who is Cecil Rhodes? Terrible character. You know, eugenicist. You know, Mason, secret society, all that. Why well, we would have a scholarship by this guy. The Diamond Mines of South Africa, Kimberly. That's the city. Because his foundation with all that Diamond Mine money paid for the Rhodes Scholarship. He was a eugenicist. Man, I'm out there with you right now. That's the failed stuff of Adam, all of this. See? And I, I and look, I, I like the interview with uh, Kanye. I think he did a good job with that, as far as you can humanly do that, as far as you can talk on a human construct. But when you start talking about the eternal essence and where the devil is and all that, you got to talk from the Bible. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but what? My word endures forever. You got to talk about a biblical worldview is better than a human biblical view. You got to argue from a place with God, from the efficacy of scripture, from the place where Jesus as the son of man is sitting. That's reality. Just because you don't know it and don't believe it doesn't mean it's not. That's a sea law right there. I'm just saying. So... Here I am, a 74-year-old man talking like this right out there. I am talking like this, but I'm telling you the truth. So let me say it again. Kanye should listen, okay, to what I'm saying. Tucker, okay, now I've been on Fox News, so I haven't even reached out to any of you. My wife just passed this year, and now I'm way more free, it looks like. I'm not loose, I'm free. So I can do things that probably, conservatively, I wouldn't have done, but right now, I'm unloading the truth in a way that makes not just sense, it, it creates sense. Sense isn't working. Look at the people who are leading our country right now. On all the, all the levels, senators, congressmen, and some governors, not all of them, but a lot of them. So the destiny of our nation is about what? Economic opportunity? Well, look at the people with money. First thing we said we were going to do because of what Putin was doing is we we're going to cut off the money of the oligarchs. Who are the oligarchs? The money people that finance him. So you cut off the money from somebody that is nonsense, the devil's child. It doesn't stop him. The word says that a rich man thinks his money is his high tower. It, that, the culture thinks like that. There is no opportunity to fix anything. Read Luke 16. When you go to hell because you rejected Jesus and you cry out, I'm sorry, 
It won't work then because you know within yourself right now that some of your behavior is rejected by God, the creator. You know it. Even Darwin that wrote the book, Origin of Species, the subtitle of that book was The Preservation of Favorite Races and the Struggle for Life. He knew better. He was a eugenicist. So was Margaret Sanger. And you people that try to tell, you know, all you people that follow Planned Parenthood, and they try to say that's about saving lives. Where? They didn't save any lives. Margaret Sanger had Gutenmacher on her board. He was a eugenicist. Now, you don't like that? Do your research. You see? Just do your research. Malthus, I can talk about that. I can talk with some of the stuff that, that uh, Kanye he didn't mention all that. It was just two hours. I mean, the boy been living for years. He can't get all the stuff he understands out in two hours, nor can I, you see. But Malthus, Francis Galton, all these people like that. But the opposite, Harriet Beecher Stowe. Hey, Uncle Tom's Cabin. That's right? Life among the lowly. Look at that. The opposite. She understood what it is to prick the conscience of America. She pricked the conscience of Lincoln. It is said that she was the one through that book, Uncle Tom's Cabin, that gave Lincoln the courage to say slavery has to stop. From the inside out, this man was convicted. Not the culture, though. The South wasn't convicted. You see, they weren't convicted. They were beaten. And literally 600,000 people died in the Civil War. Not by Christ's bloodshed, by their own bloodshed. The conscience wasn't changed any. That's why you had you know, this 1877 compromise. You had convict leasing. Was that? That's those slaves that gained their freedom because they couldn't get jobs. They were out looking for one. They were put in jail for looking for a job. Basically, that's what happened. Segregation, discrimination, and a Voting Rights Act and a Civil Rights Act as late as 1964, 65. What is that? I'm not talking about the, the, the per terrible behavior of white people, I'm talking about the unrepentance of the culture of America. That does disrepute to the Puritan ethic in all the Ivy League schools, Harvard, Yale, Dartmouth, all these schools. Those schools started as training schools for ministers and out of the church, out of denominations. Do your research. It was a scandal to uh, those first, you know, colonial documents. Those people stood strong for Jesus Christ and the word of God as being uh, inerrant. And the Holy Spirit and Jesus, the Savior, they were strong. It's in those early colonial documents. And now somebody says they're not what their genetic genes say they are. Hey, come on. And you got a bunch of people that believe that. They don't believe it. They just won't stand up flat-footed and face what the truth is. That's what you have. Scores of people, they, they're going to lose their job. They're going to lose the compliments they get. They're, you're lied to. People don't think that much of you anyway. They think about themselves. It's like you think about yourself. And yet you, you got to have it because those compliments, you know, the marketing people, the gurus, make you look good. But that's a lie, isn't it? Because why? Half of, you, half of you as Christians divorce your wife. More than half of you as non-Christians don't divorce your wife. And some states have the laws, the 50-50 rule. <laughs> What's that saying? You divorce that woman and help was with you when you made those billions, you're going to have, she's going to get half of it. Hey, I, now I know that John, Bob Johnson Hey, look, your wife, maybe she didn't get half, but she got enough to be able to buy a great resort. And one of the professional golf tournaments are sponsored by her. But wouldn't it be a better witness, man, to just have stayed married to her? Ah, you don't know what was going on. I do know this. You're not going to be able to say to the Lord, God, I just didn't love her. He just didn't make me happy. You know, none of that's going to work. You're going to have to face it. You bad biblical standard, and God created the earth, whether you think so or not. You're not used to this, are you? I know, because most of the people aren't telling you the truth. You're being lied to in a lot of circles. See?
I mean, I could go into the economic situation, the Dun and Bradstreet credit rating system there. That was Arthur and Lewis Tappan. These were Christian businessmen in New York City. Started out, though, as a mercantile agency. The issue was not credit, what your credit score is. Isn't that nonsense? Your credit score. The Bible says, oh, no man, nothing but anything but to love them. So now we have a credit system, but mm -mm, those guys said, the mercantile guys that formed the mercantile agency said, no, it's not credit, it's credibility. It's character. So we got to measure it because you're borrowing ahead of your discipline to wait to pay the cash. So now you got a few guys that build empires and most of the world got credit. And you got people who are not people of credibility because they're making money off you being a part of their credit system, trying to measure your credit. They don't claim to know God. They're even scared to say they're Christians. You found Matthew chapter 10 yet? Okay, I can't read all of it that I had for you, but I'm going to read a couple, a few verses. Look at this in verse 16. You probably don't think of yourself as this, but when Kanye was talking, he really was kind of saying this. He just didn't quote the scripture. Look what it says. Behold, verse 16, Matthew chapter 10. I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. <laughs> there we got it right there. Where? Everywhere you go, there are going to be wolves. And as long as you're like me, you're like a sheep. But what did he do as a, as the great, as a sheep? Jesus came as a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He laid down his life. He knew his life was worth something. He knew, he knew that in God's perspective, the creator, he put a value to your life by the sacrifice of his son. He says, but ye therefore... Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Are you seeing that? He's not talking about the revenge stuff that we get there. He knows that serpents are slick. They're not godly, they're just slick. So be wise like that, but be in the character of a dove. Do you get that? Mm, I don't want to say probably not. That It came to my thinking to say that. Because why? Scores of people are not like that. Be but beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you with their in their synagogues. Now, <clears throat> he's talking both religiously and naturally. The principle of making a person admit they're guilty when they're not, because you have the money to take them through the court system, they don't have the money to withstand you. So they got to say they're guilty so they won't get as long of a term. That's the honest system that God created? Nope. You know what he's saying? You're a wolf. And some of you are participating in that, in these major, the, 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 the systems that are supposed to protect the innocent. You make the innocent guilty. See? Some of it in benevolent organizations. You, you want to see how they administrate their, their money, how they set up their systems. Well, some of them are just starting out, and they're, they're, they don't know how to set it up right yet. Part of your money enables them to hire the people that will help them set it up right. You, you force them to be dishonest right from the beginning. Yes, but your Christian self. It's not the biblical Christianity, but it's what you got, you see. And so the world, that's why most of them don't want to come to Christianity because you function like the world. You got the stuff going on, you don't admit it. I'm even talking about the stuff that Jesus is not going to say well done to you about. See? For those of you who have just come on, I'm reading. I'm, I'm slamming, I'm slamming, I'm, I'm doing it, but I'm telling you the truth. Matthew 10, 17b, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And you get you get that, and some mostly it's with the mouth. Now they don't physically beat you; they just beat you up with their lies against you, or they they can't keep secret the stuff that needs to be developed in you. They can't disciple you into a transformed life. Well, all have sinned and come short of the glory. That's the Bible right there. So you got stuff going on, whether you admit it or not. He says and you should be brought before talking to the disciples right now. This is discipleship. This is reading the red of what I'm doing. He says. You'll be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. What is he saying? 
you're going to live at such a level that they're going to be convicted inside of the testimony is, a, is against you in the great day. Many of you, you haven't got caught with your nonsense. It's like, you know, the this present, you know, administration says, we're going to make the rich people pay. Man, the rich people know how to circumvent paying taxes. So what are you doing? You're going at the middle class now because they don't have the money to circumvent your you. There are laws that allow rich people to be able to stay rich and to keep their companies going. They know how to move. They have the money to do it. You told the middle class you're not going to tax them. You hire, yes, you are. Because of why? All the spending, the spending on the environment. Environment, you spend on the cleanup, but not cleaning up the people who do it. Because you put no value in where that happens. That happens in the church, see? <laughs> that happens where people are living for God. That's how you clean up people. That's what Jesus is talking about right here. See? But when they deliver you up, don't be anxious, he said, on how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. Many of you are amazed at, at Kanye. That's learned stuff, though. God is with him on it. When he's interviewed with, with, there with Tucker Carlson. I mean, let's face it, man. The dude is smart. And all that stuff about, you know, his mental capacity. Some of you know you're not that smart and have the answers. And then he lets you know he's rich too. He, he he lets you know he has money. But you see, obviously, money don't have him. See, Hangs out with Elon Musk, you know. I mean, he makes some incredible statements. He says, if I was the president of this administration, I would call Elon Musk every day. Why? Because he put a value to his knowledge and how he... Forecast projects. No, yeah. He understands that. Yeah. So, uh, here, let me read a few more verses. Then I, I got to go. I hate it. I hate leaving you. I, but I got to go. Look what it says. Well, it's not that ye, look, for it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father who speaketh in you. Now, I don't, I know a few people who believe that. I guarantee you the things that I'm saying to you is from an impetus from God. I mean, some of the things, if you get my series called Every Family is a World, what I said earlier in this message about repopulation of planets, I said he already did that with this planet. So you think he's not going to do it again? think he's changed his mind about population or repopulation? Well, it happened with Jesus, the last Adam. People get born again. They're eternal beings. Going to heaven. Where is heaven? It's a realm. So what are you going to do there? What does it mean to be in the image of God? You think you're not going to be able to do anything he can do? You can do that now. He says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Says, you says, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be done if two of you shall agree. There's tons of things that right now you can do, but it's in the eternal world. You can't be a counterfeit Christian and get it done at the God level. The Holy Spirit is here to try the reins. Why isn't why won't we have more miracles? Because you're a counterfeit. You won't admit it. You want to operate like God at your level of commitment. Jesus gave his whole life. You give about 10% of yours and you want to get his results. I mean, it doesn't matter if mainstream denominations are soul winning. And yet 50% of the clergy in the Southern Baptist lose the clergy of infidelity. You keep, keep them going through the universities. Yes, keep more people going into the ministries. But your character is the issue. You don't emphasize that. You emphasize preaching skill, hermeneutics, you see. Articulation, being a noteworthy uh, expository preacher, nonsense. Nothing in the Bible about that. But that's what you, you're like the Pharisees, Scribes, Sadducees. You're like the Old Testament prophets. You should say, you add to the qualifications of what it takes. Read it in Matthew 15, 7 and 8. Go ahead. I'm not, I'm not, you, you go there. I'm not, I'm going to finish here. And the brother 
shall deliver up the brother to death and father the child and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Tell me during that period where COVID happens, that stuff didn't happen. Families broke up over it. Ridiculous. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be, shall be uh, saved. Hated for my name's sake? Most of the Christians listen to me, the preachers, they're not hated. Why? Because they, they teach to satisfy the listeners, not to satisfy the one who gave them the insight. Nobody hates you because you're loving. You don't stand against what's wrong strong enough. If you did, they'd hate you. <laughs> he said it. He ain't lying. I got to read one more verse. But when they persecute you in this city, flee into another. For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Do you hear that? In other words, he always sends his disciples out where he himself is going to come. I'm sent out to this city. I'm living for this generation. I have insight for it. It's God's insight, not mine. I'm just a vessel. Okay? So there are things that are not getting done because they won't listen to me. Right now, there's, they're not things not getting done because I'm not saying it, because I'm saying it. Huh? Saying I just said it to you. Got to go now. Listen, I want to pray for you. And um, look, I, I'm ghetto and gutter by background. I, I came from nothing. And in the economy of God, I'm only something in that crisis in me. I'm not something in the flesh. No matter how much money or how, what positions I have, what degrees I have, and all that this stuff. Mm -mm, nope, doesn't work in the heavenly realm. What I am has to be valued from the one who creates value, and that's God Almighty. So they can retrograde me, call me every kind of name they want. Doesn't matter. You don't, you look, you are the created. So you don't, you can't create value. Mm -mm. Value comes from the creator of value itself. Yes. So you can't retrograde me, or you can't, you really can't compliment me either and make me better. Why? Because you're subject. I, I'd rather get it from the one that's the uncreated, the self existing one, the God who always was. Now that God like that, talking like that, you don't you don't get it. You know, if you're not saved and if you're not committed, you don't get that. So that's why some Christians, women say, Oh, I'm I'm done with men. Black people say, oh, I'm done with white people. You're not a serious Christian. You're not. You don't do the Bible. You react to your race. You react to your gender. You react to your feelings. You got to act to principle. If you're like Christ, Jesus is the standard. All right? Let's tell God you're sorry. Adam never did. But maybe you can. Adam never said, I'm sorry for all of that. He retrograded. The woman... Well, the woman said, the serpent, see, he didn't create repentance. Jesus had to come and die and therefore give us an opportunity to repent. Are you going to do it? Huh? Are you going to do it? Are you going to repent for your nonsense and the stuff that you know is not right? Things that you should be given towards you're not. See, some of you tip God, you know, whatever. And here I am right here. I'm going to, I'm going to do the will of God. Can you tell? whether you give to be large sums of money or not. I'm going to still do the will of God. That's what I'm called to do. And, and it's not amounts with God. It's proportions, see? So if this is it right now, these people who are on, and that's it for me, I'm satisfied. I did it as unto the Lord. God's great. He knows what my rewards are going to be, not by how many are following me, but how faithful I am to put the truth out. Got to go. Love you. Look, be encouraged for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Is my prayer for you. I'm willing to boom. God bless. Bye-bye.